What type of skin do you have? Eczema. Uh -huh, eczema. You used to have eczema. Now a lot better. Is it better now? I would say my skin condition is considered as eczema. A bit severe. It's quite manageable right now. Yeah. This skin condition that I'm having right now is called psoriasis and uh, it's an autoimmune disease. Um, I'm having uh, eczema. It's actually on my face as you can see here. Initially, she would ask me why does she need to put on a lot of lotion while it's her brother don't need that. Uh, but now she's being trained to like, she, she would just <laughs> put on lotion every time before we come out or before we go to bed. Um, I think at first it was quite difficult to manage. A struggle because you don't really know what to do. There are a lot of people that will kind of give you advice here and there. You meet different doctors, different dermatologists. So I think at some point you felt a little bit lost, but um, I think at least right now, um, I'm in a much better place. Lah. Um, having this skin condition for the past 16 years, it's always been an up and down journey. There are times it's really good because the skin is uh, you know, in good condition, it, it's smooth but there are times where it flares up and it got really bad sometimes. That goes with my emotion as well. Sometimes it goes really high and sometimes it goes really low. It could really break my confidence at times and it could also be breaking my day at times. Um, I'm feeling okay now as uh, I have it when it was March 2018 and it was way worse. I can't reverse time so my focus now will be have it under control and not to let it affect my life as much as it used to be. Do you still remember? How does it happen? Yeah. I remember, I told you. Uh, uh, it was really young when that happened, around when she's two years old. It's just first start, started off with that two toes and it's been there like just like for months. So she's only two years old, so she would just scratch non-stop until it's bleeding. But eventually it got worse. Lah. It slowly spread to other part of the body. The rest of the body sort of like come and goes, but the toes has been there forever. Um, I think around 14, 15, somewhere towards the later part of secondary school, lah, that's when I realized that I had uh, eczema a bit de developing. One of the first areas that actually I realized that um, I had eczema was actually on my arms over here, uh, between the joints. Um, I guess I started sweating a little bit, then it started from a, maybe a small little patch and it kind of just kind of got bigger and bigger and bigger. But I've already kind of had, uh, I realized I actually had some, maybe some mild itchiness probably on my back or my neck, but I think the area that's probably the most evident is probably on my arms, both sides. It all started 16, 17 years ago when I first uh, had a little patch of dry skin on my scalp. And all I thought it was a uh, dandruff. But then, after months, it grew bigger, the patches got bigger. Lo and behold, it actually grew behind my neck, it actually grew a lot down my forehead, and then behind my back. Many months down the road, it doesn't seem like a normal skin condition anymore, and that's when I begin to uh, search for uh, an answer, from doctors to doctors, and finally, to really learn about this term called psoriasis. That time, it started to have uh, several patches on my face, and also on my body parts. Basically, all over my body I actually have this, this kind of patches. So I went to see doctor and doctor diagnose it as eczema. I think the part that he gets sad is when she cannot eat the food that she likes. Because when she was younger, she loved a lot of cheese and yogurt. And I realized that it's from um, dairy products. So I have to stop all those. Only then she get better. Then she would feel sad when there's a, like, a party and everyone else is having ice cream and she can't. <laughs> She's very strong, I would say. Uh, up to the stage where she would come and ask me if it's okay for her to just take one or two spoons. Because I think after she ate it, she suffered as well. She also don't want uh, her skin to go back to that really bad condition. Because her snack and everything, I need to adjust it, which I need to adjust for the whole family as well. So we stopped buying milk and cheese and everything. Uh, she's taking almond milk right now. Milk is actually in a lot of products like cakes. And you know, kids have a lot of parties and she can't take normal cake. So we'll opt for like jelly cake. Inconvenience, I think one of the biggest inconvenience is clothing. Uh, I try to avoid light colours, white. It can just be a simple cut, simple scratch, and oh, suddenly there's, doo -doo -doo, there's a lot of blood stains over there. So I try to avoid light colours, so I generally like to wear black, darker colours, navy, that kind of uh, colour scheme. Lah. 
yeah. Other inconveniences, I would say I constantly need to be in cold places, whether it's inside a shopping mall, restaurant must be cold, aircon must be cold, everywhere seems to be cold but malicious. Um, so I think these are one of the things that I constantly need to be kind of aware of. Not being able to go to certain places, certain kind of activities I try to avoid just basically because of temperature. And also the moment I sweat, then there's the reaction, then it starts to itch. I scratch, then we go through that cycle again and again. Um, having this condition definitely brings a lot of uh, emotional baggage. I used to be a very cheerful person, extrovert and very fun, outgoing, that kind of person. Because of this skin condition, which uh, sometimes when it flares, I don't want to go out. I refuse to meet a lot of people. I, I begin to social less. I really don't like to go to swimming pool. Simply because, you know, with a swimming trunk, you know, you got to expose your skin and in a public pool, eyes are staring or even wear short sleeve to go out. So that, that kind of lifestyle forces me to really think about how I should really live my life instead of just living about pleasing people, to care about what people think about my skin. Most importantly is who I am as a person, who I am in the inside and I want to choose to be happy. Because of this eczema, I have to control my diet and go and practice a special diet which makes eating out a difficult task because every time when there's a friend suggested uh, shall we go to this restaurant and I have to search up their menu and see is there any food that I can eat or just nothing that I can eat in that specific restaurant. Other than the diet part is actually about skincare because with sensitive skin, I have to be extra careful about the ingredient of the skincare that I use. And I realized that there are so many ingredients that is not good for skin. If you're having normal skin, that's okay that you can use it. But for sensitive and broken skin, this thing is killing the skin. A little bit. A little bit. Are you afraid to let people know that your skin is a bit itchy and red? red? I already told them. Then how do they react to you? What kind of response I do forgot. they get? You forgot? <laughs> so you don't feel very different? Oh, overall, you're okay. But Earlier on, yes. Um, Early on, I really feel that some why, why some people they their skin is like flawless. They don't have anything. Uh, they don't have anything wrong. They don't have to go through what I go through. But then I think kind of just going through life again, I start to find that actually a lot more people that actually have these conditions actually have a lot of these issues. Personally, I feel at least right now where I am, I'm a lot more comfortable. Don't think about it so much. Of course, it's still there because I still have to look at it every day. Personally, I feel that right now um, I'm in a much better place, lah. Absolutely no, I'm, I'm, I'm still a human being at the end of the day. No matter how, what you call this, this psoriasis is taking a toll out of me, I'm still a human being with emotion. I'm still happy at times, I'm still sad at times, I'm still normal. Having this skin condition doesn't set me apart from other people. It simply means a, a little bit of adjustment here and there. But deep down inside, I am still a, a, the same Lex that I used to be. And I want to be that same person, yeah. Well, I don't think that I'm a different person, or I'm special from anyone else. I would say I see myself as a normal person but with skin condition. Like what she told me last time, she would say, it's okay, you will get better soon. Everything will go back to normal. I think because it's your skin, it's cosmetic, you start to feel maybe people will look at you or think of you a certain way. But I feel that um, just learn how to be comfortable in your own skin, learn how to embrace it, Embracing the problem helps a lot more than trying to hide or run away from it. So I would definitely say, um, know that you're not alone. There are people out there that are really, really willing to help you. And also just learn how to be comfortable in your own skin. There is nothing wrong with you. Everything can be solved. Lah. Do not lose hope. Simply because um, life doesn't just end with the skin condition that we have, right? There's so much more to life. And if we are able to open up our heart, open up our mind to explore the endless possibilities of us as a human being, we can live a great and happy life. What is more important is not the way we look on the outside, but in the inside, who are we as a person? So the most important thing is to really live a life so meaningful that when people look at you, people look at your life, wow, I want to live like you. I would say this, um, your skin doesn't define you as a human being and your skin shouldn't restrict you on how you want to live your life. Focus on your recovery and healing instead of letting the skin condition stopping you from achieving what you want. I would say live your life the way you want uh, regardless how your skin is like. 
I can be me again.